Hi there, everyone. My name is Kelly Barner, and welcome to this edition of AOP Introducing. So this is a series we've been doing for a long time, and it's an opportunity for us to shine a light on growing companies that are helping procurement teams 10x their impact. Over the next 20 minutes or so, we will dig into one organization's origin story and discover how they solve unique challenges before providing insight into how you can take action if you're interested in learning more. Now, keep in mind, this is the only format we created Art of Procurement where we talk specifically about a company's product. Now, today, we're introducing RFP Ninja. For sales teams in organizations that sell to larger enterprises, responding to RFPs can be a complex, time-consuming process. RFP Ninja makes it easier for those suppliers to overcome some of the most common challenges associated with responding to RFPs. To tell us more, I'm pleased to welcome Niraj Shah, founder and CEO of RFP Ninja. Niraj has over 15 years of experience in the software industry, all of it spent working in and around procurement. He has founded multiple companies and brought them to scale, always looking to solve the next problem or uncover a better way to do business. So hi, Niraj, and welcome to the conversation today. Hi, Kelly. Great to be with you. Now, this is one of those questions we ask in all of our Art of Procurement conversations. Did you find procurement or did procurement find you? I think in my case, it was a little bit of both. Uh, you know, I got, I, I joined a company called CVM. I was the number th uh, three employee there. And uh, that was my introduction to the procurement space. It was something I was looking to do after graduating from MBA and wanted to be part of a startup. And that uh, happened to be a great company to join. And uh, it was my uh, education in all things procurement, supplier management, GRC, supplier diversity, category management, uh, spend reporting, all of that. Uh, we grew that company to scale and exit it. And then uh, I started something else, which was not in the procurement space. But, you know, later on, I found that procurement was where my calling was. And then I found procurement when I started Supplier IO, And that continues to now. As much as people always talk about falling into procurement, what nobody ever talks about is the fact that we don't let you leave once you're here. Once you're <laughs> in true. procurement, all roads loop back and, and lead back into procurement. Now, I talked a little bit. To get in, it's tough to leave. It is tough to leave because nothing else compares, right? <laughs> uh, now, I shared a little bit about RFP Ninja in my intro, but I'd love to hear more about it in your words. What does RFP Ninja do? Uh, RFP Ninja is designed to help uh, customer support teams uh, respond to customer requests better. And these could be sales teams, this could be IT support teams, these could be vendor due diligence teams. And uh, you know what they do today is many of these requests, they feel re customer requests, and many of these seem to be very similar because they're getting the same questions from hundreds of customers. And everybody asks generally the same questions, uh, but in a slightly different way. So it tends to get repetitive. So you know, from a customer, from a vendor perspective, it gets to be challenging to respond to all of these in a consistent manner and just with uh, the number of requests such as that are coming in these days, it can be somewhat challenging, right? Uh, so we created RFP Ninja to help support those. And this is important not just for suppliers uh, who are filling out these requests. It's also important for the procurement teams to recognize that as we go forward, more and more requests that you get will be generated via AI, right? So it's uh, generated automatically. There's some overview, but a lot of their information is going to be created from uh, using AI. And uh, if you do this correctly, our goal is that, you know, not only will suppliers be able to respond to these questions more effectively, uh, but also from uh, buying organizations where, you know, they are able to get so much of this information without even doing an RFP that they do fewer RFPs, much more pointed RFPs, and uh, life becomes easier just from both sides. And it's a happy world. So from a using a usability standpoint, RFP Ninja is predominantly used by suppliers to respond to RFPs, but it certainly touches the procurement side of things as well, as you mentioned. 
So that makes this a little bit different than some of the other platforms we've covered here, most of which are intended for procurement to use directly. Now, I asked this question with a little bit of irony already in mind because procurement gets a lot of feedback about the RFP process, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Sure. What gap in the market or opportunity did you see that led you to create RFP Ninja? Excellent question. Uh, there are, I think there are gaps on both sides, right? So there are gaps from procurement teams uh, where, you know, as much as suppliers complain about doing RFPs, uh, it's not like the process is any easier for the procurement teams. They have to send out, create these questionnaires, send out these questionnaires, analyze the responses, get the information back. And, uh, you know, you see a lot of that being addressed already. Companies like Fair Market are doing an amazing job where a lot of the RFP gets generated automatically and some of the analysis also gets done automatically. So I think, you know, from a procurement side, uh, there's a lot of stuff happening that will make RFPs easier. But on the flip side, the more easier it gets from procurement to issue RFPs and security questionnaires and other questionnaires, the more the onslaught will be on suppliers to fulfill this information, yeah. right? So the requests uh, already that come into like a company like my previous company, they're overwhelming. I mean, many of these uh, supplier firms are uh, small, don't have the teams that can manage such uh, requests because many of these requests are detailed and complicated and require experienced people, right? Uh, so the ability to fulfill these customer requests to the level that customers need them uh, was a big gap. Companies struggle with this no matter what size of the organization you are, especially if you're small and medium. Finding the type of people who can answer these questions uh, while doing just justification to customers' needs is hard. And so what we built is an AI that says, well, let me learn about your company. Let me understand the nuances of what your products do, what your company is, what your data policies are, uh, what your information security structure looks like. And then whenever a customer asks anything, we are able to provide very detailed, very uh, accurate and very quick answers to the customer's request. So it's a... Uh, it's a situation that's coming up from both sides. You know, mm -hmm. companies will issue more yeah, questionnaires, will issue more RFPs uh, much more easily because it is becoming easier. But from the flip side, suppliers need to be able to support that uh, those increasing number of requests. I don't see, I mean, I don't think they will, or I do believe that there will be a situation where a lot of this stuff, both from the customer side and the supplier side, will be generated with AI. So it's AI talking to AI for a majority of the information. Um, and that's where I think where we're getting, heading to. So my goal was, as these requests come in for suppliers, can we help them respond to this more effectively while also making sure that the procurement teams are getting correct and accurate answers. Now, what do you believe are some of your points of differentiation? Uh, this is early days in anything related to AI. So, yeah. uh, you know, if you look at us and some of our competitors, many of the features will be similar, but uh, there are nuances in how each one approaches it, right? We approach this with an eye towards knowing what procurement wants, being able to understand what procurement's needs are, and making sure that we are using the AI's power to be able to respond to those specific situations. Uh, we also view it from the supplier's perspective, realizing suppliers are sharing this information. It is very confidential, privileged information, and they don't want some of this showing up, you know, as everybody fears, showing up in chat GPT tomorrow, right? <laughs> so we do a lot about around data security, guardrails, uh, making sure your information is secure, making sure it's not going out somewhere where it's not supposed to, and also making sure you're providing information accurately, uh, and uh, and confidentially, right? So that's one. And the second thing is around uh, helping customers kind of customize the solution to what they need, right? So we have, uh, there's, you know, today if you look at it, there'll be a lot of solutions out there that says, well, we'll get you up and running in five minutes. Uh, sure, you can get up and running in five minutes, but does it meet the standards that you have? Does it meet the standards that you need? Does it meet your customer, your specific custom situations? Uh, a common example is, you know, when you're responding to customer sales proposals, you have a voice, you have a language that you use. Are you able to customize to that, right? Are you able to talk the same language so that it comes across that this is your company that's doing it versus something that ChatGPT wrote in the ChatGPT style? 
right? So we do a lot of customization on that. So data security and customization are two key things how we differentiate ourselves. Uh, again, the goal is provide things accurately, provide things quickly, but also provide things with the right security and the right voice that your company wants to represent. And I do think it's interesting, you know, I agree with your point about it being early days for AI, and yet it is the one thing that gets us more excited than anything else. Right. And so it reminds me of the days when software went to the cloud, right? You had platforms that existed before that, and you had to find a way to transition, but then you yeah. had newer companies that started after that line in the sand, and it became yeah. a completely different journey. So it'll be interesting to watch all of these paths forward as people not only incorporate AI in existing solutions, but also create brand new things that frankly, we didn't have a scalable way to create in the past, like you're doing with RFP Ninja. Absolutely. And you know, some of these, as you said, are first generation products. And we as suppliers are learning how to use them and take advantage of them. But so will the procurement team. Procurement will team will say, well, these are things, this is how the suppliers are responding to it. But what are the ways that I can use the AI much more beneficially, which either reduces the load on me or reduces the load on suppliers, right? And uh, some of these tools are, you know, the supplier tools are in first generation and so are the uh, procurement tools. And I think there's a lot more, a lot more that we'll see in the next two to five years. I mean, what to be a building today maybe just a commodity and everybody has it and people don't even think twice about it in two years. But, uh, but yeah, I'm excited about where this field is going. Yeah. Now I know we talked about the fact that it's early days, not just for AI, but also for RFP Ninja. Do you have sort of any early either case examples or anecdotes or feedback or things that you've heard, whether it's on the procurement side or the supplier side to give yeah. people a sense of how this ends up looking and feeling in practice? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we've had several customers use uh, Supplier IO, and one of the things that sorry, RFP Ninja, one of the things that has uh, has always surprised us is that every customer tends to use it a little bit more than what we expected them to use it for. So our first company used it initially for RFPs, and they said, "Well, you know, this is great. It's answering the questions that I need. Can I now use it for doing the security questionnaires that we get a lot of?" and Turns out the volume of their security questionnaires was, you know, five times more than what they got on RFPs. Uh, this was my previous company. They get, you know, 150 uh, security questionnaires a quarter. That's a lot of questions to answer. Um, and so they expanded the use into security questionnaires. We now are working with a company that not only wants to use it for uh, answering basic RFP questions and, uh, you know, security questionnaires, but they're now also using it to generate complex pricing matrix. So this these companies happen to be in the printing industry where I didn't know this, but I'm learning now, is it can be very complicated about what exactly you're printing, how it's manufactured, what type of product, the paper you use, what size of envelope you use. I didn't even know there were that many envelopes. <laughs> but uh, so but now they're saying if these matrices are very complicated for us to do for pricing, can AI help us with that? And so we're building tools to do that. Uh, and so you know, I foresee a lot of this expanding um, with each customer. I, you know, the use cases we have today that you see on our website are RFP and security questionnaires. But, you know, already we are seeing requests in pricing, we're seeing requests in sustainability, we're seeing requests for marketing, we're seeing requests for uh, customer success. So um, I think as we kind of go in and if we have the same conversation a year from now, I think our use cases for how people use it will expand quite a bit. I'm sure. Now, when we think about companies getting started, are you seeing uh, companies identify a specific, you know, you talked about information security questionnaires versus sort of overall RFPs. Are you seeing them start in a more target area of process or are they doing sort of a broader pilot program, maybe even to go through that information generation experience that you talked about up front? How are companies sort of testing RFP Ninja and, and seeing where it fits into their team? Yeah, so great point. So we start out, when we talk to customers, uh, initially we used to start about RFP, right? And we got this question, the response saying, yeah, we don't do too many RFPs, but can you help us with this? This seems something that we can work with there. Uh, so normally what happens is as we go through conversations with customers, a specific 
area comes of pain point comes up and we will then first do a pilot specifically on that. Now with the AI, there's a lot of you know garbage in, garbage out type of thing. If you're not feeding it the right information, it's not going to give you the right answers. And it's very quickly to get disappointed because uh, there's this all, you know, halo around AI that, oh my goodness, it can do whatever you want, right? Yeah. It can't. It's, had, it's got some uh, strong capabilities, but it also has limitations. So there's a learning curve that comes in to say, hey, what should we provide? How should we provide it? How often should we provide it? And uh, to be able to get to learn all of that, we do a pilot with customers to say, let's take a small data set. Maybe let's take one product that you want to do this on, or let's take out one service that you want to do, for example, information security on. And let's do a pilot for three months, see how it comes in. You will learn what types of information we need to provide. And you know, we'll also be able to fine tune uh, the responses to what you need them to be. And once that pilot's done and you have a general idea of, of it, then you can easily expand to more sections very easily. Like if you know what to okay. do for one product, you now know how to kind of expand that to the next 10 products. Right, so uh, that's our usual approach. Let's find out what the pain point is. Let's do a small section of it, educate ourselves about the, uh, the need of what we need to provide it, and then how, what our expectations should be from the product. And once we are aligned on that and we're happy with the results, then we expand to what the additional you know, adjacent areas might be. Now, if we have people that have listened to or watched this conversation that are interested in learning more, whether they're on the procurement side or the supplier side, where should they go to learn more? Uh, the easiest place is go to our website. It gives you a lot more, a lot of information. There, you know, obviously information about the product, but we have a lot of blog posts around as well, how to kind of structure RFP and security responses using uh, using some a tool like RFP Ninja. Uh, I'm also available. I would love to talk to anybody who is interested in it. Um, you know, my information is on LinkedIn. Uh, it's also on our Ninja's website. So would love to chat with people who are looking to even just talk about the topic and see how it might impact them. And would love to have the conversation. Awesome. Well, Niraj, I'm so grateful for your time today. I appreciate this opportunity to learn more about not just your backstory as a company, but this new way that we're potentially applying AI within procurement. I also appreciate everybody who's joined us in to watch or listen and learn more. Uh, and I wish everybody a great rest of your day. Kelly, thank you so much. I appreciate you uh, taking thank you, the time Niraj. to have this conversation. Have a good one. Bye-bye.